My name is David Wood. I'm a Drake Pharmacy student, currently on an acute care rotation. I'm going to talk to you today about allopurinol and renal dose adjustments. So when initiating allopurinol therapy, it's important to test the HLA-B5801 allele. Specifically, it's important to test um, for this allele in patients of Han Chinese or Thai descent. Also, with Korean patients with a CKD greater than stage 3. Some practitioners also say that it is valid to test patients of any renal function of patients with Korean descent. These patients are at elevated risk of severe cutaneous adverse reactions with allopurinol. So it's important to test for this allele um, and it is recommended not to use allopurinol or to have extreme caution uh, when using in these patients. So when starting allopurinol, it is also important to have caution just with the initiation, as initiation of allopurinol in an acute gout setting can actually precipitate the gout, make it worse. So it's important to start this therapy with colchicine or an NSAID for the first three to six months of therapy. So typical initiating dose of allopurinol, we want to start typically with patients with normal kidney function at 100 milligrams once daily. And then we adjust this uh, dose by titrating up by about 100 milligrams every two to four weeks. So we, we work our way up slowly even in patients with good renal function with this medication because of the risk of adverse reactions specifically right off the bat with allopurinol. Um, and then with maintenance dosing, we typically see doses between 300 milligrams to a max uh, FDA approved dose of 800 milligrams daily. And this dose uh, may be given once daily or in divided doses. So depending on how, you know, different patient factors such as adherence to medications or adverse reactions, tolerability, etc. Um, so dividing doses into two to three doses daily can help with the GI tolerability of this medication. So what is it? Allopurinol hypersensitivity syndrome, or AHS, is a severe systemic syndrome. And while it is rare, occurring in about 0.1% of patients, it is life-threatening, with mortality running as high as 27%. AHS tends to occur within the first six to eight weeks after starting therapy. And some additional risk factors that go along with the development of AHS include renal impairment, high dose of allopurinol, and diuretics, specifically uh, thiazide diuretics. So why renal impairment matters in the first place? Um, major route of elimination of allopurinol is via metabolism by aldehyde oxidase um, into oxypurinol. And about 80% of allopurinol is metabolized into that oxypurinol. And while allopurinol may have a short half-life of about one to two hours, the half-life of oxypurinol is dependent on kidney function. So for patients with normal kidney function, the half-life can be about um, 18 to 30 hours, but in severe impairment, it can be up to a week. So that's why it's important to consider this uh, when dosing and, and titrating dose um, for allopurinol. A large amount of that oxypurinol is eliminated unchanged through the kidneys. So we just want to ver uh, consider that that a majority of that allopurinol is converted into that um, oxypurinol that is dependent on kidney function. So for renal impairment dosing, uh, for getting a patient started on allopurinol, for EGFR greater than 60 milliliters per minute, there's no adjustment that's needed for allopurinol. However, if our EGFR runs less than 60 milliliters per minute, then we want to start at a max of 1.5 milligrams of allopurinol per milliliter per minute of EGFR. So essentially, if we have a patient with an EGFR of 50 uh, milliliters per minute, we want to start at about 75 milligrams daily. That's a good starting dose for that patient with their renal function. Below, we have a chart including uh, where our patient falls in the EGFR and what's a good recommended initial dose for those patients. So while uh, normal patients, we can start at 100 milligrams daily and titrate every two to four weeks. These patients, we may want to titrate a little bit um, by a little bit less of a dose and maybe less frequently. So lower increments and longer intervals for these patients. So while kidney function is very important in patients on allopurinol due to that oxypurinol excretion through the kidneys, um, CKD can lead to an increased uric acid levels in the body, which can cause issues for the patient. Two-thirds of urate excretion occurs through those kidneys, uh, so impaired renal function can actually lead to that hyperuricemia and increased risk of gout flares. And hyperuricemia may be associated with progression of chronic kidney disease as well. 
So if we have those uric acid levels increasing because we are subtherapeutic with our dose of allopurinol, that may lead to progression of kidney disease, which is also bad for the patient. So while dose reductions in patients with renal dysfunction is very common in practice, because prescribers are worried about those adverse reactions, it is a big concern to uh, have subtherapeutic doses for patients on allopurinol due to those uric acid levels being too high. So the current information that we have on the topic, AHS tends to occur within the first six to eight weeks after starting therapy, like we touched on earlier. Um, so after that six to eight week period, it's valid to question the fact that do we need to adjust the dose at all once we get to that comfortable um, level of dosing for the patient where we can keep those uric acid levels under control. And with the current 2020 American College of Rheumatology guidelines, they state that um, allopurinol doses can be increased above 300 milligrams daily as long as we have adequate monitoring for adverse effects even in patients with chronic kidney disease. And just some current studies that are out there in the literature. Um, there are currently studies that identify patients who developed AHS and who were tolerant on it. And in patients that developed AHS, they may have been at smaller doses. So like in that first study with uh, patients at 100 milligrams versus tolerant patients at 150 milligrams. Um, in that second study, they looked more at creatinine clearance-based dosing. Um, in patients that developed AHS, they weren't any more likely if they had higher than their normal creatinine cl clearance-based dosing. Um, so patients that were on higher doses weren't necessarily more likely to develop AHS. And different studies have been looking at the titration of allopurinol as well. Um, a small pilot study looked at titration of allopurinol, and they're titrated on a monthly basis with chronic kidney disease, and no AHS was observed, and no serious adverse effects related to allopurinol were observed as well. So in summary, uh, it's valid to question the fact that do we need to adjust allopurinol dosing in patients with uh, renal impairment? So after that six to eight week mark, um, is it really necessary to decrease the dose for patients that are on a stable dose of allopurinol? We run the risk of hyperuricemia, so increased uric acid levels when we do change that dose, and we may be subtherapeutic for that patient. So further studies are needed to solidify this concept of dose adjustment in patients with either AKI or CKD uh, to really get uh, set in stone a current guideline to properly dose adjust or to not dose adjust patients on allopurinol with renal impairment. And these are the references that were used uh, to create this presentation and to form my opinions on this topic, on adjusting allopurinol doses in patients with renal impairment. So thank you very much for listening.